Hello my loves, Tony here from TL Yarn Crafts and welcome back to my channel. I am up bright and early this morning. My tea is hot, my whip is ready, and then I just remembered that I got a package yesterday. So there's this product that's taking Instagram by storm right now called the Wool Genie. And let them tell it, it's about to make yarn barf a thing of the past. Based on the videos, it looks like this contraption kind of holds your yarn up in the air and then feeds the yarn at the pace of your stitching, which is gonna prevent tangles. Now as your resident yarn snob, it is my duty to try all new crochet gadgets so I got one and I thought it'd be fun for us to review it together today. Now if that sounds like a good time, make sure you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel for even more fun crochet product reviews, patterns, and tutorials. And you know we have to give some love to our cup of caffeine sponsor before we start the review. I'm sticking with tea today because if you can't tell from my voice, I am slightly under the weather and I'm hoping this makes me feel a little bit better. So today's cup of caffeine sponsor is Angie R. And when donating, Angie said, Crochet Academy rocks. Thank you for the the inspiration and positivity you put out into the world. And thank you so much, Angie, for your positivity today. I really need it because all I wanna do is crawl back in the bed. <laughs> Now, if you like my videos and want to support my channel, buy me a coffee. Who knows? I might shout you out in my next video. Now, let's get to the review. I originally found out about the Wool Genie from my friend Emily, who is Hooked Hazel on Instagram. She put up a video essentially adding a ball of yarn to the Wool Genie and showing how it feeds the yarn into her project. I immediately Googled it and I came across what I think is the official website for the Wool Genie. So let's take a look together. So it's a relatively simple website. I love that right at the shop. It says Wool Genie. There's a link to shop and then the products are right below it. All they offer is the actual wool genie and then some additional parts if you need them. The wool genie on their website is $25, which I think is a pretty reasonable price to try a product that you've never heard of before. I was able to find what I think are wool genies or perhaps knockoffs on other sites. On Etsy, I found one for $18.95 and then over on eBay, I found one for less than $3, but that can't be the official wool genie. I, I wouldn't think so. Below that on the website, you have an instructional video, which I'm sure I'm gonna get really, really good use of. And and since this is such a simple website, I mean, there's no reviews. Actually, hey friends, Tony here. So I'm actually editing the video right now. Turns out there are reviews for the Wool Genie on their website. So I thought it'd be fun to take a look at just a couple. So most of them are five stars. I love this Wool Genie. You don't have to keep pulling out more yarn as the yarn flows easily as you knit or crochet. This is a great product and the delivery from the company was very fast. Every crocheter needs one of these. I love, easy to put together. I love it. Every single single review is giving this five stars, so good sign. But what you do find is like a chat with us feature so you can reach customer service. There are also links to all of their social media, so they're not shy about promoting their products and also interacting with their audience. And then there are links to their shipping policy, privacy policy, return policy, all of the things that are important to know about a company before you purchase one of their products. So I did feel really safe making my purchase as opposed to some products that I bought online and I'm like, fingers crossed that they even arrive. Now let's get the package open. So initially right out of the package, I've got some pieces in bubble wrap and also a few little cards. One is a thank you for your purchase and please talk about us on Instagram. And then a thank you card, thanks for your purchase, supporting a small business and there's a little coupon code on here if I wanna buy something else. It looks like everything is here. All right, we've got a metal bar, plastic pieces, what looks like a base and a couple of other things. And then a set of directions. I did pull up the instructional video. There's one on their site. So I'm gonna see if we can use that to put our wool genie together.
Now that I have it assembled, I can see kind of what the magic behind the Wool Genie is meant to be. So there is a large metal piece right here that retracts inside of this little spindle when you're not using it, but otherwise it connects to a metal plate here at the top of the actual arm. This allows this spindle piece to just kind of float freely. Since these are just magnets, it can twist at whatever pace it wants. There's no friction here, so it's not gonna go too fast or too slow. It's gonna go right at the pace of your stitching. Really great in concept, and if this actually works, I could see this being something I use on a regular basis. Now that's not to say that products like this don't exist already. I have this right here. It's a yarn ball holder. So you put your yarn ball on there and it just kind of spins. It's kind of got that Lazy Susan type technology. It absolutely works, but the trouble is if you don't hold it at the right level, the yarn can kind of sink under the ball and get stuck around this spindle and then it doesn't actually feed. But when you get that sweet spot, this is a fantastic tool. I love this one, it's handmade and it's a little on the pricey side, but it's definitely an heirloom. It's something that you buy and hold on to. The Wool Genie goes a step further because it's using a little bit of ingenuity to solve some of the issues that you might have with a product like this. But I do like that it's not electronic, so you don't have to worry about something failing on you. Now that we've got it all set up, I'm gonna get my yarn on it and give it a spin. So I pulled out my whip. I have it here. I'm working on just a corner to corner blanket for my niece. This is my first time trying this technique. And the fact that I didn't know it was so beautiful and so addictive is truly a crime but I'm working on this blanket and the yarn I'm working from is right here so what I'm going to do is actually detach the yarn so I can give the wool genie a try I'm just gonna fasten off here I think I'm actually gonna recake this yarn so I can give the wool genie a real chance to pull it from the outside cleanly like it's supposed to five minutes later our fresh cake is secured looking good so I'm gonna load it onto the wool genie so I should be able to take this off and just kind of slip this over the spindle here and put it right back up. Wonderful. And then it just, oh wow, okay. All right, slow down, sweetie. Okay, just one second. So what I'm noticing right off the bat is I am getting yarn at the pace that I need. Wool Genie is trying to figure out my pattern. So it's not pulling cleanly just yet, but it's also not giving me any tension. So as I tug the yarn away from the Wool Genie, it's coming to me as I need it, which is really wonderful. But I'm not left with like this long tail of yarn that could potentially mess up my tension. I do love that this product makes no noise. The connection between the metal plates is completely silent. Oh, okay, maybe I spoke too soon, but it looks like if the yarn gets a little nut so like this, we have the potential for some little mini malfunctions. I think it might help if I was slightly further away perhaps, or maybe if the product was a little bit lower. It says to keep the product on level with your project. So that was my goal here, but I don't know, maybe just the way that I crochet this product doesn't really like, cause it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, but for some reason my style and this product are not driving right now. Let's give it another, let's give it another go. We'll give it an another few stitches. I've got a few stitches in here and I've got a good first impression of how I feel about the Wool Genie. So we'll talk about that in just a second. But one thing that I do love is when I'm finished, I can just pop this right off, take my cake of yarn, put this all back in the project bag and I'm good to go for whenever I wanna pick up this whip again. And I can just attach the spindle back to the Wool Genie and store that. It also says on the website that I can easily break this down for storage and travel if I wanted to, which is super nice. So what do I think about the Wool Genie? I think that there are actually a lot of things to like about this product. The first thing to like here is the price. I often remark that the price of things in the craft space seem to just be skyrocketing lately. And the fact that the Wool Genie is only 25 bucks makes it an easy investment, even if you just wanna try it and maybe you'll gift it down the line. I also like that it does exactly what it says it's gonna do. It feeds the yarn at the pace of your stitching. Even while I was going, one thing that I noticed about myself is when I shift my project, I kind of yank the yarn. And I think that's why the Wool Genie was going a little nuts sometimes, but that's not a default with the product. That is me understanding my crochet style a little bit better.
there. So then I can make adjustments if I'm using this tool so that I don't have to worry about the magnets disconnecting or the spindle kind of going at weird directions. And that also speaks to the integrity of how well this product is made. That magnet held on no matter how much I pulled and tugged that string, which is really encouraging to somebody who's maybe just learning to crochet and doesn't know what their crochet style is just yet. So this product is actually aiding in helping you understand your style, but also making your stitches smooth and effortless. Downsides of the product, I think the main one that comes to mind is that you do have to be kind of in a specific seating arrangement for this product to work. Having the Wool Genie at level with your project or slightly below seems to be the ideal orientation. Now, if I was using the Wool Genie again, I would take my whole situation down to the couch and sit the Wool Genie on my coffee table. That's going to orient it slightly lower than the level of where my stitching is gonna be and I think it'll make the yarn feed a lot easier. I guess the only other downside is aesthetically it's not super cute. I kind of wish it came in other colors. I would love it in a pink, but I would take blue, purple, even gray I think would be really cute. But in all honesty, that is a personal preference for me. It's totally fine in kind of the unblemished plastic that it is. So if you're planning to try the Wool Genie, I've got links to the product down in the description. And I would also encourage you to try different put-ups of your yarn on the Wool Genie. Try it with a cake like I did or even a donut or a bullet skein. I've seen videos for lots of different yarns and they seem to work just the same, which means that there's a lot of opportunity to fall in love with a product like the Wool Genie. Now I'm curious to know, would you try the Wool Genie? Drop down in the comments and let me know your feedback and questions. And if you ever come across fun gadgets on the internet, shoot me an email. I would absolutely love to try them. Thanks so much for popping by and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>